in their nest tracker and it was near impossible for him to lose a target. Orton didn't react beyond glaring at anyone who looked his way. That's not the only thing that doesn't add up here. First of all, where does he get all of his money from? He has no job, no bank accounts, and yet he always seems able to buy whatever he wants with cash. Is that the worst part of this situation? Hell no. Do you know why? Because he knows about us. Sir? Phil blinked in confusion. He knows about S.H.I.E.L.D. and he knows about me. Fury growled out. That's impossible. Phil said as many echoed their agreement. Agent Bradley, Fury called on one of the agents. Do you agree with him? No, sir. The agent stood up. I was assigned to track. The target, sir. I spent a day in the same hotel as him and then I wake up to find a note that says you don't need to follow me anymore. I'm coming to you. Keep your schedule open, Fury. Sit. Fury ordered and the agent did so. That tells me several things. One of which is we are going to be alert on the off chance that he does come here. The second of which is that Harry Black somehow knows about our location, and that means he either found out himself or someone told him. Fury as I searched around the room, that leads me to believe there is likely a leak in shield. I... Hello, a voice interrupted. Everyone turned to see a video playing on the screen. The video was of Harry as he was holding the phone camera quite close to his face. Fury turned to Hill and Halson and saw that they looked just as surprised as he was. Hello, Mr. Fury. Harry grinned. I'm sure you know all about me. I mean, really? Over a year and you learned nothing? How much time, money and agents have you wasted trying to catch me? Fury growled but the video continued. Now you see, I didn't mind having Shield trail after me. I had fun dodging your agents and I was fortunate enough to be able to meet all the beautiful women you employ in your company. Is Jessie there? Or does she prefer Natasha? Natasha looked very surprised but before anyone could do anything the video continued. Yes, you see I know quite a lot. Like Barton who used to follow me on rooftops or how you tried basically every possible way finding information about me without actually confronting me. It was fun while it lasted but I kind of want more in this little relationship of ours. You see I am well I am rather tired of this. I've discovered what I wanted to do. The last year I've spent a lot of time thinking and I've decided what I want to do for the rest of my life. When you come to see me personally then I will tell you until then I think I need to make a statement to prove how serious I am. Yes, I know. How about this? The screen went blank, shortly followed by the lights in the room, the chain shrouded in darkness. Panic started amongst the agents until the lights turned on a few seconds later. Wait, that's it? One agent said. No, that's not it. Fury said he wouldn't do this crap so he can turn the lights on and off. Fury reached into his pocket so he can grab his phone and contact the other agents. But then he froze. Sir? Hill said after noticing the fact that her boss turned into a human statue. My phone is gone. Fury snarled. He took it. Are you sure? Halson asked. Of course I'm sure. Fury snapped. Fine him. Lock down. Search the whole ship and find him. Well sir, Halson said a little while later as he and Hill stood in Nick Fury's office at Fury, sat by his desk. We've done a whole suite. We couldn't find your phone and security camera footage of the last hour was erased. However, we were able to find something that you'll find interesting. And what would that be? Fury asked sarcastically. Sir, one of our agents was found unconscious in a closet. Hill replied with a serious expression. We took him to the infirmary. He was fine, unharmed but still knocked out. After waking him up we realized something important. That agent was also at the meeting today. What? Fury narrowed his eyes. I... He was at the meeting today. Barton and several others remember him being there but the agent in question is claiming to have not made the meeting as he remembers helping a new recruit who got lost and waking up in the infirmary. This new recruit? Fury's words came out slow. Described as having messy black hair and green eyes, Halson nodded to Fury's unanswered question. It seems that we've had a security breach, sir. If what you're saying is true, then that means that Harry has the ability to take another form. We may indeed have been right when we suspected him of being an enhanced. Fury said softly before realization hit him. But that means that Harry was in that meeting with us. Hill and Halson's eyes widened. They had apparently not considered that possibility before now. We have to. Fury found his words cut off by the sound of a ringtone. His one eye widened as he opened his desk and found his phone, sitting there with a note stuck to it. Sir? He'll ask. But Fury didn't notice. He slowly picked up the phone and placed it on top of his desk as he looked at the note. Fury remained frozen for a few minutes, but for him it may as well have been hours. He looked at the note like it had offended his mother. The words from the note ran repeatedly in his head. Hi, Fury. 
I would delete your info on me, but you don't really have enough for it to be worth the effort. Contact me, that's all I want. Here's your phone, goodbye. Harry Black? Yes, I won't start any fights. Sir? He'll ask again. But Fury wasn't listening, he was too busy going over the note. Hi Fury, two words that told Fury that Harry was reminding him that he knew about him. The next line about the information told him that Harry found himself in position to not only access their info but also delete it. The lack of information was an insult and it did its job that Fury found himself to be very, very angry. His next line, contact me, that's all I want was simply saying that he wanted to meet face to face. Fury wasn't sure about that, on one hand this guy was an enhancer who not only managed to break into S.H.I.E.L.D. and hack their systems and they did not know much about him. On the other hand they hadn't made any progress in over a year and Fury had no idea about what the guy's motives were. He could refuse but then what would happen if he did? Would Black just break in again? The next time he might do worse than just steal a phone. That brought him to the next line where Harry admitted to taking the phone by giving it back right before he said goodbye. Was Harry trying to show he had no interest? Did he do something to the phone? He'd have to check it out. As for goodbye, was that supposed to be mocking or was he just trying to be polite? The last line was really interesting. It basically said that he'd be peaceful unless they fired the first shot, but Fury couldn't help think that Harry was implying he had no problems with ending any that might start. How did he get on the ship? Fury asked eventually. We're not sure sir, Halson admitted it. our airspace hasn't had anything bigger than a bird in the last three hours. Teleportation? He'll ask and both men turn to her, you see.